This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, February the 14th, 2019. It's Valentine's Day. More about that third century Bishop Valentine of Rome in a moment. Valentine's Day as a celebration of romance began with Geoffrey Chaucer all the way back in the 14th century. It was the right time of year for a day of courtly romance, still wintry, still cold, still short days and long nights. In the 18th century, in England, it evolved into an occasion in which lovers expressed their love for each other by presenting flowers, offering confectionery, sweets, sugary things, and sending greeting cards known as Valentines. Valentine's Day symbols that are used today include heart-shaped outlines of all sorts of things, doves, and of course the winged baby Cupid, who is anything but a cherub. St. Valentine's keys are popular in parts of Europe. They're given to lovers as a romantic symbol and an invitation to unlock the giver's heart. In a decidedly unromantic twist, they're also given to children in order to ward off epilepsy, which used to be called St. Valentine's malady. And that's not the only odd part of the history of this day. St. Valentine himself was a popular bishop in Rome in the 3rd century. He was arrested for being a priest by the emperor Claudius Gothicus in the 260s AD. He did a couple of miracles from jail, and the emperor took to visiting with him in the jail, much like Herod and John the Baptist. But Claudius started to realize that he was buying in to what Valentine was preaching. And he realized that he was starting to think seriously about converting to Christianity. And he got himself spooked. And so he basically called down and had St. Valentine decapitated. And so that's the saint behind the day of romance. The other not-so-romantic topic that Google has to, to offer us about Valentine's Day involves Al Capone, a group of uh, surely well-mannered young entrepreneurs called the North Side Gang, and a garage where several handsome young police officers spent their Valentine's Day in 1929 not surrounded by romance. And so, on a much happier note, today is the birthday in 1859 of George Washington Gale Ferris, Jr. He was an American engineer who got the call from the organizers of the World Expo in Chicago back in 1893. They were looking for an interesting attraction. Using modern building styles, techniques, and materials, they wanted something original, something daring, something unique in response to the World's Fair that had just been held in Paris that gave us the Eiffel Tower. Ferris was a railroad bridge man, but he put his pen to paper and he designed a large wheel which would allow passengers to be elevated into the sky and then brought back down to earth over and over again. After some investigation and assurances from plenty of other engineers that Ferris's wheel could be made safely, Ferris himself went and raised $400,000 to build the thing. It was gigantic by our standards. It had 36 cars. Each car was fitted with 40 revolving chairs. And each of those cars was able to fit about 60 people giving it a total capacity of 2,160 people per revolution. That means that about 38,000 people could ride the Ferris wheel daily. Ferris charged 50 cents for a nine-minute ride, which raised about $750,000 for the Chicago World's Fair. Remarkable. The man who made the Ferris wheel, born today, 1859. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.